Hello students, welcome to EPG Parshala. I am Professor Ipshita Bansal from BPS Women's University, Sonipat. Today, we are going to talk on the module Effective Communication Lessons from Indian Texts and People from the paper Business Communication. By the end of this module, students will be able to get insights about the lessons they can learn about effective communication skills from Indian traditional texts and great people of India. India, over a period of more than 5000 years of documented history, has had a civilization of eternal values and culture of unbroken continuity. It is a land of rich traditions and knowledge systems, inspirational texts and great people who have not only inspired and shown the way to the Indians over the centuries but also to the people the world over. In this module, we will discuss the effective communication lessons we can learn from our ancient texts like Ramayana and Archastra, Dohe of Kabir and Rahim as well as Indian luminaries like Swami Vivekananda and Mahatma Gandhi. This is not an exhaustive list and these are only a few examples of texts and people from whom we can learn lessons on effective communication. So let's start with Kautalya's lessons for effective communication. Kautalya or Vishnu Gupt, popularly known as Chanakya, was the Prime Minister of Chandragupt Maurya around 313 and 289 BC. His Arth Shastra is one of the most extraordinary and elaborate treatises on political economy throughout the ancient period. Kautalya's object was completely practical and he composed the Arth Shastra for the socio-economic welfare of the man living in this world without giving any weightage to the eternal world which man had not seen. The book is remarkable for its dealing with a vast variety of subjects and its elaborate and detailed considerations of diverse aspects of ruling a state. It is divided into 15 books known as Adhikarnas and 150 subdivisions known as Prakarnas. Kautalya's Arthashastra was primarily written as a guide for the king who should be able to rule with justice and equity to ensure protection and prosperity of his subjects. It encompasses instructions about such topics as the training of the heir, duties of a king, diplomacy, how to form alliances, how to attack a powerful king, how to deal with revolts in the rear, administration of law and order, punishment for concealed income, administration of justice, regulation of industry, trade and commerce, etc. There is hardly any area of human endeavor which Kautalya does not analyze in depth, giving real life answers to every conceivable hypothetical situation. Kautalya or Chanakya has given six principles of effective writing. These are first, proper arrangement, that is, logical building up of the structure of the content starting with the mention of the most important or prime theme of the subject matter. Second principle is connection, that is, linking the subsequent themes with the previous ones without the next being incompatible with the previous one, right up to the end. The third principle is completeness, that is, the written document being just right in content without any excess or deficiency of matter, words or letters. It implies that the message has to be precise but at the same time complete in its meaning. 
whenever necessary the matter should be explained in detail with the help of reasons examples and illustrations the fourth principle of effective writing is sweetness that is using beautiful words and language for conveying messages fifth principle is exaltedness that is proper use of sober language and avoiding the use of words which could be offensive the last principle of effective writing as given by cortelia is lucidity that is using such expressions and words of the language which can be understood easily by the people for whom the message is meant to ensure easy understanding cortelia also gives five defects of writing first absence of charm that is unattractive writing on an inadequate surface words and letters not being clearly visible etc all this shows the casual approach in communicating second defect is contradiction that is incompatibility of themes within a subject matter this makes the communication message disjointed and the receiver of the message is not able to understand what the sender of the message is trying to convey third defect of writing is repetition that is conveying the same thing more than once without any distinction between the two or without the addition of any new idea in the latter statement repetition makes the reading uninteresting and the reader loses interest so the purpose of communication to convey the message is not achieved the fourth defect of writing is incorrect use of word that is using the wrong gender tense and case the use of right word in the wrong context also changes the meaning of the text leading to ambiguity fifth defect of writing is confusion that is not grouping similar themes and grouping dissimilar themes together this creates confusion in the mind of the reader and he is not able to view the message in the right perspective the meaning gets lost on him all the points that have been given by cortelia for effective written communication are very much applicable for written communication and oral communication as well proper arrangement of themes linking of ideas completeness of an idea lucidity use of body language etc are considerations that have to be kept in mind before encoding a verbal message cortelia also talks about non verbal communication he states that a message can be sent across through non verbal communication also that is making use of facial expressions and body language he explains it with the help of example of how minister should take cues from the king's facial expressions and body language to know king's opinion about him as he states and he minister should observe his that is king's gestures and expressions for a wise man shows with his gestures and expressions a reversal of the pairs of the feeling with liking and hatred joys and distress resoluteness and fear a communication message becomes stronger and clearer if words are accompanied by corresponding facial expressions and gestures but if words and body language contradict each other in encoding a message then the impact of the message is weakened or in some cases 
the receiver of the message may even become confused. For example, a reprimand or a scolding accompanied with a smile. Sometimes in sensitive situations when one cannot make use of the words, the message can be conveyed by judicious use of expressions and gestures. For example, to show satisfaction, pleasure at other's sight, offering a seat, taking pleasure in other's talk, paying regard to the other in matter that are to be communicated, appointment to a task with a smile, touching with the hand, all these gestures show satisfaction. To show dissatisfaction, anger at the sight of other, not giving him a seat and not looking at him, change in complexion and voice, contraction of one eye or lip, consultation with another, going away suddenly, indifference, all these gestures show dissatisfaction. So we see that Cortelia discusses in detail all forms of effective communication. Let's now discuss in brief effective communication lessons from Ramayana. Ramayana, the great Indian epic, provides many examples of effective communication. For example, in the Ramayana, when for the first time Hanuman meets Lord Rama and Lakshmana in the forests, and introduced himself, Lord Ram was greatly impressed with the way Hanuman communicated and he admired the effective communication skills of Hanuman. In one of the shlokas of Ramayana, Lord Ram explains the significant characteristics of communication skills of Hanuman, which astonished him the most. He talked about various good points about Hanuman style of communication. Hanuman spoke for the required level that is he spoke very concisely not too short not too long. His speech was lucid and unambiguous. This is how his speech possessed clarity. He spoke with no grammatical errors. His choice of words was very much suitable and apt for the situation. Hanuman spoke with the right pitch, tone and volume. His pronunciation of words was not only correct, but his speech sounded as pleasant, as soothing as music. The words spoken by Hanuman went directly to the heart. Hanuman is a great example of showcasing the effective communication skills as an orator and even as a listener. Similar examples of effective communication we can see in Ramayana in the dialogues between Ram and Lakshman, between Ram and various rishis during his forest stay, between Lakshman and Ravan at the time of Ravan's death, when Rama sent Lakshmana to him for learning Raj Dharm, between Sita and Hanuman in Ashok Vatika. There are numerous examples in Ramayana from which we can learn about effective communication skills, which the students can learn by reading Ramayana thoughtfully. Let's now come to excellences of communication in Dohas that is the two line verses. Dohas or Dohe are two line verses written by great saints like Kabir and Rahim. Dohe touches us all in different yet intense ways. It can be emotional, educational, inspirational and developmental. We can learn a lot about ourselves others and about the human values just by understanding the deep meaning of Dohas as it acts like Gagar Me Sagar that is ocean of knowledge in an earthen pot. 
one of the important aspects of Doha is its re readability. Unlike the long articles or books, Doha's tend to be shorter, which means even the busiest person can make time to read and relate it to one's own life. Doha's are very relatable for people of all educational backgrounds. Kabir ke dohe. Example 1 which talks about self-awareness and introspection. Bura jo dekhan mein chala, bura na milia koi. Jo dil khoja aap na mujse bura na hoi. Meaning, when I searched for evil in this world, I did not find any. But when I peeped in myself, I realized that there is nobody worse than me. This Doha beautifully explains in two simple lines the importance of being aware of oneself. Kabir said that he explored the whole world for the dreadful persons, for that evil personality which is to blame for all wrong deeds in the world. But he was not able to find that wicked person all the way wherever he searched. Then he introspected and critically examined his own personality, his own thoughts, opinions and views. And there concealed within himself, he found the real evil which grew more and more unnoticed. So before judging others, one should judge oneself first. Example 2 of Kabir's Doha which relates to patience. Dheere dheere re mana, dheere sab kuch hoye. Mali siche so ghara, ritu aaye phal hoye. Which means that everything is accomplished slowly and gradually by keeping patience. Even if a gardener waters a tree through hundred pitches of water, still the fruits will grow only after rainfall. Kabir here, using the metaphors of fruit and rain, explained that human beings are always in a hurry to acquire more in less time. And due to this nature of wishing for victory in very short span of time, we invite ill health, stress and frustration. Therefore, it is vital to have patience and continue with one's work as results will appear in due course of time. Example 3 relates to merit orientation. Jati na poocho sadhu ki, pooch lijiye gyan, mol karo talwar ka, pada rehendo myan. One should not ask the race or caste of a gentleman, rather his knowledge should be understood as the value of sword is more than the covering shell. Here, Kabir gives a deep thought on knowledge. He says that we must not judge a person by his clothes, caste and appearance, as it doesn't make a person big or small, but their knowledge and soul, their kind-heartedness, make them big or small. These are the real assets they carry and are the real gems of a person. So focus should be on the real self on the individual and not on the physical appearance. Example 4 Effective Communication Hiye tarazu tolike tabumuk bahar ani Boli ek anmol hai jo koi bole jani Meaning, one must understand that words are like priceless gems. Hence, one should speak words only after weighing them properly. Speaking or communicating is priceless for the people who actually knows that, when and how to speak. The words are the way we speak is how we react in various situations. A person who knows the real values 
of speech is the man of wisdom and he thinks and analyzes before he speaks even a single word in the same manner rahim also in his dohas has given a vast knowledge to the people in simple and understandable language the first example relates to taking action after proper consideration bigri baat bane nahi lakh karo kin koi rahiman phate dood ko mathe na makhan hoy which means that because if something wrong has taken place it is not possible to make it right even after million attempts same as it is difficult to make butter from the curdled milk which means that a man should act after having proper consideration rahim explains that even many attempts will not be able to alter the situations which have grown wrong especially the relationships just as butter cannot be produced from curdled milk thus it is a vital lesson for life that one should not let the situation go out of control example 2 of rahim ke dohe relates to the concept that small is as important as big rahiman dekhi baden ko laghu na dije dari jahan kaam aaye sui kaha kare talwari meaning rahim says that one should not throw away small objects if one gets larger ones as where the small needle is required the sword will be of no help Rahim says that for sewing clothes small needed plays the important role and even the big sharp sword is of no use in this process because a small needle can't be replaced by a large sword in the same way we should not underestimate importance of small things or humble people and should not take too lightly to the people who have low status in society as the work or tasks they do are of equal importance as those done by the elite people so we see that dohas are treasure trove of worldly wisdom stated in short and simple form easy to understand and remember these are the important characteristics of effective communication let's now understand about inspirational communication of vivekananda he was a great leader having the capability to inspire the youth through his effective communication vivekananda understood the essence of communication while traveling the world vivekananda iterated that people produce thoughts in one of his lectures he stated that i am talking to you this evening and it is producing thoughts in your brain by this act of transmission we understand that my thoughts are being transmitted into your brain and your mind and producing other thoughts Vivekananda during his lectures logically presented his ideas and never aimed at forcing his thoughts over others in order to make followers Vivekananda be it at Chicago conference or at informal lectures that he gave at various places appeal to people He had such pleasing personality and communication skills that while traveling he asked for food people invited him in their homes and requested him to spend time with them to learn better things His communication style was motivating and inspirational He used simple words and straightforward style 
This helped him to connect with people and inspire them to act in positive ways. Some of the quotes taken from his lectures and writings will illustrate how Vivekanand was a great motivator and is still a great motivator to the present day youth. He says that if the mind is intensely eager, everything can be accomplished. Mountains can be crumpled into atoms. In another quote, he says, you cannot believe in God unless you believe in yourself. So he is asking the youth to believe in themselves to be able to achieve success. At other place, he says that take up one idea, make that one idea your life. Think of it, dream of it, live on that idea. Let the brain, muscles, nerves, every part of your body be full of that idea and just leave every other idea alone. This is the way to success. Yet at another place he says, stand up, be bold, be strong, take the whole responsibility on your own shoulders and know that you are the creator of your destiny. Indeed, a very powerful thought for today's youth. One of the most powerful quotes of Vivekananda is, Arise, awake and do not stop until the goal is reached. Mahatma Gandhi, the father of our nation, used empowering communication to deal with the people and make them do what was required for gaining Indian independence. Communication as a skill can be honed. It requires focus and determination. This can be easily understood by following the journey of life of Mahatma Gandhi. He was not a born communicator, but was a very shy person right from his childhood to his young adulthood in England, where he had gone to study law. During his stay in England, Gandhi once stayed with a vegetarian family. There he met Mr. Howard, the author of Ethics of Diet. He invited Gandhi to speak at a meeting for the promotion of vegetarianism. Gandhi thought to express his views, but how to do it was the question. He did not have the courage to speak. So he decided to send down his thoughts in writing. He went to the meeting carrying the document and stood up to read it, but could not. He writes, my vision became blurred and I trembled. So the speech had to be read by someone else. This shows his shyness and stage fear. But he was aware about this and tried again and again to speak to remove his hesitation. Let's now consider some important aspects of empowering communication of Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi used his shyness to be a thoughtful communicator. In fact, he saw the positive side of it. He said, my shyness has been in reality my shield. It has allowed me to grow. As a man of few words, will rarely be thoughtless in his speech. He will measure every word. Since Gandhi was shy, he spoke less, but very thoughtfully, measuring every word, making his communication with the masses very effective. With economy of words, his messages contained soul-searching questions and heart-winning answers. Gandhiji said, Trust is my God. Lack of transparency leads to lack of trust and this lowers the credibility of the leader. Gandhiji called secrecy the enemy of credibility. 
second aspect is gandhi ji had all the qualities of a great communicator and motivated millions of people even outside india that too when there was no television or internet he was a good listener and empathetic communicator on returning from south africa he first toured india extensively that too in the third class railway compartment to have insights into the needs and wants of common people before preparing any action plan gandhi ji succeeded in reaching close to the people by overcoming all barriers of communication he was a patient listener and never took hasty decisions his scanty clothes on his body that remained only half covered spoke of a body language which identified him with the poor people shivering in winter and sweating in summer third gandhi evoked people's right to freedom of communication with each other as a doctrine of natural justice which is clear from his following statement if the luxury of wires be denied to us we must manage with the post if the postal communication be also stopped we must use messengers friends traveling to and from will oblige us when the use of railways is denied we must use other methods of conveyance no amount of slowness imposed can checkmate us if we are sure within to enhance effective communication mahatma gandhi used people's language to communicate with them gandhi ji's interaction both lateral and vertical with different classes of people having diverse backgrounds convinced him that the masses have great potential to effect social change and bring about renaissance he also knew well that both language and semantics could be at times a strong barrier to communication hence for harnessing the potential of common men in expediting the process of change he thought it imperative to communicate with them in their own language in which they could comfortably express views and understand issues Gandhi empowered common people by providing necessary inputs through oral and written communication so as to enhance their awareness knowledge to acquire the ability to differentiate between right and wrong identify threats and opportunities and recognize one's rights and responsibilities for this he thought it essential that the sources of information were reliable and access to these sources was open to all not restricted to a select few his communication oral or written was clear and concise hence effective he addressed the masses wrote articles and traveled all across to deliver his messages and wherever he could not make his presence he sent letters or greetings or condolences gandhi was conscious about the necessity of print media for enhanced communication and therefore he accepted the responsibility for the publication of many daily weekly and monthly publications in four languages that is english hindi gujarati and tamil mahatma gandhi used his silence also to communicate silence is the womb of language silence conceives prepares and gives birth to language a state of silence is not merely an emptiness of sound it is the fullness of unspoken intelligence silence is the pure potentiality of language 
words or sounds are material expressions of this potentiality just as the noisy surface of the sea is held together by the vast unruffled depths of water silence integrates language into meaning and understanding gandhi ji's silence conveyed a specific meaning that was not less effective than words from his mouth gandhi was a great communicator he achieved amazing success in communicating with people across the globe that is why his name has been chosen nearly 60 years after his death as the brand ambassador in the way of apple gandhi for apple macintosh and as telecom italia gandhi for telecom italia great leaders not only listen to the external things or voices but even to intrinsic calls what made mahatma gandhi's leadership successful was a dedicated purpose and his listening to his inner call which helped him to be more self aware he listened to his conscience and reflected and contemplated deeply on past experiences for future learnings gandhi was like an expert therapist he listened patiently to the grievances of people and helped them to li- live a better life let's now summarize what we understood in this module in the module we appreciated that communication as a field of study did not develop in modern times in western world thousands of years back kotelia documented the principles of effective communication in his book arthashastra we can learn lessons of effective communication from our great books like ramayana or mahabharata as well as from the simple dohas written by kabir rahim or tulsidas in modern times our great leaders like swami vivekananda and mahatma gandhi set important examples of inspirational and empowering communication as stated in the beginning this is not an exhaustive list and these are only a few examples of texts and people from whom we can learn lessons on effective communication there are many more texts and people to learn from the important point is that as management students we should always try to learn from our own indigenous sources of knowledge as well along with the western and or universal knowledge thank you